here they are so cuff C for cuff that's my hem band my hem band there it is that's my other cuff move those out of the way so this is the piece we're going to work on next which is our neck band okay so I, put, I know I put that sticker on the wrong side so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold this in half lengthwise right sides together matching the shorter ends and I'm just going to put a wonder clip on it to hold those together and we're just going to whiz that together to create a loop so if you're using a sewing machine it's a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and then you're going to trim away about half of the extra trim away half of the seam allowance and press open on overlocker we are going to just overlock together 1.5 centimeters in so actually what i might do because again it's going to help me to do this stage on my overlocker where it's not as clear i might just measure in and draw a 1.5 centimeter line just to help myself with that next stage so I can 1.5 in if you haven't got a quilters ruler like this you can just sort of measure in 1.5 draw two dots and then join the lines um, but I find this really quick and easy it's really handy you can see that I love this ruler because I've rubbed out most of the <laughs> I don't know what it is about this area here but it's all all the inks rubbed off from overuse there you go, so I've got a line there now. The line is at 1.5. It's important to get the seam allowances right because then everything will come together nicely. If you end up with a neck band that's too big, it's going to sit up straight on your neck. It's not going to um, sit flat. So make sure that you do use a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance when you're sewing this bit together. So let's hop back over to the overlocker. And don't worry if you're on, an, on um, a sewing machine, just because I'm on an overlocker, um, you're just following exactly the same series of steps. Make sure that's nice and flat under there. There we go. Trim off those extra bits. So I now have a loop like this. Now for the next step, you're gonna to need to get your ironing board back out again. So press this down to one side and then take your rib, I can take that sticker off now, and fold it in half, wrong sides together. So, whoops you're going to just create that neck band by folding that in half and give it a little press. Try not to stretch it too much when you're working with it, but you just want those, those raw edges to meet. So you're going to take it and it's gonna end up being folded in half like this. Make sure it's nice and even all the way around. And making sure those raw edges match. You don't want to it's quite a, you know, the, the neck band is one of those um, processes in making this garment where you want to be um, with it. You don't want to be feeling too tired or too flustered um, because it's a small thing that go and it's right slap bang at the center front of your garment for everyone to see. And you really do want to take your time with it and be patient with it to get it right. You don't want your neck band to sort of um, be wobbly or ha be a different width on one side from the other because it will really, show up so yeah take your time with each of these steps that i'm talking you through so yeah so you're gonna you've you've um press that to one side and then you're going to bring those raw edges together and give it a press to create your neck band and then the next thing we're going to do is attach your neck band into your into your neck hole on your dress or your top so there's my neck band pressed in half it's got a nice sharp crease now and we are ready to attach it to my dress. Okay, so I've got my neckline of my dress or top here 
And what I want to do is I want to find the center back position and the center front position and mark that with a pin. Um, so I'm just going to fold it in half like this and matching together those shoulder seams I just pull back fold it in half and where I've got that center back position I'm just going to mark that with a pin and then I'm going to do the same on the front so we're just kind of gently folding in half you don't want to stretch the fabric when you're doing this so be gentle nice soft hands bring that there and then I'm going to put a pin at the front there so I've now got the centre front and the centre back marked with a pin. This is going to help us match up our neck band. So I'm looking at the right sides of the fabric and I've got my neck hole there with my centre front and centre back matched. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that seam where we joined our neck band facing into a circle and I'm going to pop that line that up with my centre back because that seam is going to sit at the centre back of your neck and we'll just pop a pin in there to hold it in place. Oops, quite a few thicknesses of fabric to deal with, there we go. So make sure your raw edges are matching and you're just pinning that in place. And then we're going to come to the front and we're going to do the same. So can you see how my raw edges are matching and I've just got right sides together and what I want to do oops I need to needed to mark the to mark the center front of my neck band so do the same thing on your neck band just to get that center front point which will be exactly opposite um, where you did your seam that's going to sit at the center back this is just so that it's evenly distributed and then what we're going to do is we're going to match up those two pin points okay and then pin through them all So my neck band is now, let's move that so that you can see. Is now pinned at the back and at the centre front. So I've got my raw edges are all in the middle, and my folded edges on the outside. So what I want to do now is travel around the circumference of that neckline opening and just pin the rib to the opening. Now what you'll find is that this rib appears shorter in length than the, the opening. And this is deliberate, it's what you want to happen. And the reason for this is that you want to almost have to stretch that neck band rib slightly to fit it in. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring it in so that when it flips around the other side and sits next to your neck, it will sit flat. If it's not doing that, what, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with like what I call a boat neckline. You know those necklines that sort of sit upright like the 1950s style. Um, and you don't want that for this, you just want it to sit flat. So what you'll find is as you're pinning it, in between each pair of pins, you have an excess bit of fabric so your rib will stretch into it and you just want to take your time work your way round your neckline and try to make it so that the excess is even between each, each set of pins if that makes sense so you're just going to try to make your neckband so that it's evenly placed all around so you've got an even amount of stretch going on all the way around and that will just mean that it will just sit nice and flat you don't want it to sit proud you want it to sit nice and flat and this is just a case of kind of working it round and you're going to go back and forth a bit you're going to pin unpin put the pins back in again and keep going round and round until you're happy that it feels like you've kind of got it even. And what we're going to do next is we'll baste it in place first of all before we actually go ahead and stitch it, we'll baste it. Um, I think that's a good step because then if it's not quite right it's not a pain to unpick. 
I certainly wouldn't go straight on to overlocking this. Because <laughs> once you've overlocked, it's sort of, it's cut, isn't it? And it's difficult to undo. And kind of having quite a few pins at this stage is a good idea. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Making sure those, that shoulder seam is pressed back. And raw edges are all lining up consistently all the way round. And yeah, no, never can do this in a rush. I did once when I made a top on Christmas Eve that I wanted to wear on Christmas Day and I rushed it and I've got a wobbly neckline now. And every time I wear it, I think I shouldn't have rushed that neckline. <laughs> it's in a lovely crushed pink stretch velvet and it's very pretty but it has a wobbly neckline. <laughs> I just had the urge to surge. <laughs> so you can see I'm putting really quite a lot of pins in there. So I'm going to carry on doing that and then I'll come back and show you how to attach it. So I've now pinned my neckline all the way around and I'm going to go back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to use my sewing machine just to baste in place. Um, so let's start. Well, I've taken off my free arm so that I can tuck my neckline over the end like that and get to it. I'm going to start somewhere about near the centre back. I'm just going to come in about a centimetre for basting. I'm using a straight stitch and I've increased the stitch length to four. I haven't worried about changing um, my thread colour because actually if I can't unpick these, if I can't get to them all after I've overlocked it then I'm not going to worry too much. So I'm just going to use the same colour. And then as I go, I'm going to pull on here. Can you see as I'm pulling how that excess bit there, can you see, is just stretching out and being taken up? So I'm going to gently, um, I don't want wrinkles, what I want is I want to stretch that in. And I'm going to take my time, one centimetre seam allowance with the basting. So this raw edge is matched up to the 10. And I'm using a long stitch. I'm just going to get rid, rid of that little thread that's in my way. And off I go. I'm going to do a little bit at a time taking the pins out as I go and I'm going to stretch out that extra and I'm just going to stretch the neckline into the dress. And I'd want to make sure that I haven't got any wrinkles underneath here. I don't want any, any bits sort of wrinkling up under there. But of course this is the good thing about basting is that if you get wrinkles or problems you can just address that little bit where it's gone wrong, unpick it. Whether as if you went straight into sewing your lightning stitch or your overlocking, you can't really undo it. Now remember that you're going round a curve here, so you're gonna have sort of unusual folds of fabric on this side. As long as this bit's flat and you're following the curve of the neckline, then you're fine. And like I say, just take your time. Make sure that my shoulder seam is pressed in the correct direction towards the back. Sure those raw edges are matching all the way around as well. So I'm just stopping and starting and at each point I'm just making sure that everything's sitting flat, that the raw edges are matching and that everything is sort of stretching into place where you want it to be.
There we go, so I've gone all the way around a centimetre in from the edge and I've stretched this in as I've gone. My seam allowances on my shoulders are pressed towards the back and I'm ready to turn it through to the other side to have a look. Let's move my sewing machine out of the way. Right, now at this stage, you just want to take a look at your neckline and just check to see, uh, just go round like this and just check, are there any wrinkles um, or any pleats, tucks, anything that I don't want? Because it's at this stage that it's actually quite easy to unpick and um, sort it out. Right, good. There's nothing that's actually um, needs unpicking there. That's good. But don't won't be worried or surprised if yours has got a few tucks and wrinkles. I think I just got lucky with mine. <laughs> Maybe I've done it before a few times. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you've done it a few times, it's kind of, it gets easier with each go. So, there we are. Now at the moment that is still sticking up a little bit like that. In a, in a minute what we're going to do is we're going to stop top stitch around here and that will sit more, sit a bit flatter and giving it a good press will make it sit flat as well. So I've basted that in place with my nice big long stitch. I'm now happy that it's sitting nicely. I'm now happy to go over to my overlocker and overlock that. Now if you're using a sewing machine, not an overlocker, I would still do the same. I would start off by basting with a, a long straight stitch that's easy to unpick just in case you have any wrinkles or puckers that you need to correct and then you're just going to go back onto your sewing machine and um, finish off with your lightning stitch or your zigzag stitch. So I'm going to hop over to my overlocker now and stitch this in place. Okay so I'm ready to pop this on my overlocker and stitch round. Now overlockers don't have a free arm like sewing machines do so you just have to kind of figure out your own uh, way of doing it. Um, you can either kind of go like this and come round on the inner side of your circle or you can go like this and sew round this way. You just either, either way you do it you just need to make sure that you are um, keeping anything from folding up. If any of your fabric gets folded up underneath it's going to get sort of sucked into your overlocker and, and chopped off. So I'm going to do mine this way. I'm actually going to lift my overlocker arm to get that underneath and I'm going to start off at, where can I find it, near the centre back there and I'll just pop that under there, slide it under to get it in place. And I'm going to, I can just about see my stitch line. I know that was at one centimetre, so I need to come in a bit further. And um, again, I'm just going to go as slow as is possible on an overlocker. Because I've done all that basting, this is where the basting really helps because I don't now have any pins or clips in the way. But you do want to take your time with this. I want to make sure that as I'm sewing, I'm not kind of chopping anything off that shouldn't be chopped off and um, everything is nice and flat on the underside as well as above. And I'll just go in like this. Oh, I'm pressing my sewing machine pedal. I'm wondering why my overlock wasn't going. Here we are. So I can see my 1.5 line there is roughly matched up with my raw edge and I can see that this needle is just in from that stitch but if you wanted to you could draw yourself some you know some little dots 1.5 centimeters in just so that you can follow but um, it takes a bit of experience. It's actually easier to do this on the sewing machine than it is the overlocker so if you're feeling a bit worried about this stage then just do this stage on your sewing machine. And you can see that the bit that's cutting off is just coming off here. So that's now overlocked 
all the way around. And I'm just going to go and give it a really nice good press. And then we're going to move on to the final stage, which is just to do a top stitch around here. So I've given that a nice good press and I'm now going to come round and just do a top stitch all the way round that neckline edge on my sewing machine. Once we've done that, that's our neckline finished. I'm going to grab my scrap of fabric and I'm just going to test. So I'm going to do a, little, I'm going to do a zigzag around my neckline edge looks nice and um, it allows the neckline to stretch more than a straight stitch would so gosh I can hardly see that because it's the same color um, but I, you can just take a scrap and do some tests just to see how big you want your stitch to be so I'm using a zigzag and I think I'm going to go slightly bigger than that that was 2.5 by 2.5 I'm going to try 3 by 3 okay so I've ended up going for a stitch a zigzag stitch with a stitch length of 2.5 and a stitch width of 3 and I'm just going to pop that oops the other way under my over my free arm like so start somewhere just to the um, to the back of the shoulder seam and get yourself whoops in position and with this you just want to make sure it's similar to the under stitch you just want to make sure that you're catching that overlocked bit or your if you've used your sewing machine you're catching your um, seam allowance under here so you're stitching on the it's like the opposite of a facing you're stitching on the outside of the garment this time and you're stitching on the fabric not on the rib and you're coming all the way around the neckline and in doing so you need to catch this and almost you're stitching that seam allowance to the fabric and that will stop the neckline from rolling up and you're going to come all the way around the curve of that neckline so remember when you're doing this you're not sewing in a straight line you are sewing around a curve because you're sewing around that um, neckline so there will be a bit of stopping and starting and every time you sort of come to it sort of comes um, round the corner a bit you can just leave the needle into your fabric lift up your foot smooth it all back down again and carry on just getting over that lumpy shoulder seam there and just choose yourself a reference point so my reference point I've got a line on my um, foot there and I'm lining that foot up that line up with this bit here in between the rib and the and the fabric and that's what I'm keeping my eye on as I come round So my advice with this neckline, if it's the first that you've done of this kind, um, is just to practice. So you might want to use some of the scraps from where you cut out and almost do a pretend neckline first so that you have a practice run before coming on to the real McCoy. Um, and that way, you know, you'll... Uh, have a chance to kind of get it right and practice. There you go, there's my neckline finished and you can just about make out that zigzag coming around here which just attaches this um, seam allowance down and that basically helps to keep this um, sitting straight. And you don't have to do that top stitching stage if you don't want to. If you feel like your rib neckline is already sitting nice and flat and you don't want to have a stitch showing there, and then you don't have to do that, just up to you really. 
Um, so I'm going to give it a good press and then tomorrow we are going to move on to the sleeve. So have a great evening, have a great day and I shall see you tomorrow. Bye for now.